guys, welcome back to me and my family fun. Today we're going to do day four of the read aloud. Now, you may be asking, Vanessa, I've got to flip my camera. No, I didn't. I'm letting you look outside. And the people who watch our videos every single day, I know you may be saying, Vanessa, you say that every, every video. Well, I'm sorry. I have to say it every single video because for the new people. So I hope you understand. By the way, yesterday was a very long chapter and we are going to read a couple books we didn't have enough time to read the kissing hand so the, i'm going to this is the um backyard from a different one. so we're gonna read the kissing hand there was an old lady who sung a tune Let's go to the zoo. It's another flap. It's another flap book. Allig Alligator is angry. He looks pretty angry. And then these last two are nonfiction books. How and Why Spiders Spin Silk and Butterfly Book. So the first book we're going to read is... Is alligator is angry. So I'm gonna read this book first. Let's start. Alligator is angry. As you can see, it was a dark, rainy day, and Bear and Alligator were deciding what to play. You can see out the window the plants are looking sad. So this is alligator happy. I know. Let's plant some colorful flowers to brighten up this room. So, hold on. There we go. Hmm. Good idea, said Alligator. So if you don't know what Bear said, he said, "Let's plant some fl beautiful flowers to brighten up this room." So he got. That's Bear. But that's over. That's the friends ran up to get their operons. Alligator wanted the red opera, but Bear first. So he looked. He wanted the red one. Bear took the red one. That's mine! Thought Alligator. He clenched his teeth and started to feel angry. So all of a sudden, he's feeling angry because Bear took his um thing. I don't know. I'm on. Next, the animals went to the art table. Bear sat so close to the alligator that the, the pictures touched. So the pictures are touching because he sat really close to him. Move over, snapped alligator, and he pushed Bear away. So he needed room, and then he pushed alligator, and all the paint are falling. Now alligator pushed the bear. Soon alligator was painting big yellow flower. He was just finishing the last petal when Bear looked up the when Bear looked up the yellow paint. He took the yellow paint. So he needed the yellow paint and he took it. I need that. I need that, thought Alligator, and his face started getting hot. So his face is getting red because he's very angry. Alligator looked at his painting. He didn't like it. Then the more he looked at it, the hotter and angrier he felt. So, looks like he doesn't like it. He's getting very angry. I want the yellow paint, exploded alligator. He grabbed the paint and spilled it on both paintings. So he spilled the paint. He's surprised and shocked. My painting is ruined, yelled alligator. He felt a rush of hot anger rush through his body. So, look at his painting. It's destroyed. He reached forward angrily and pitched Bear. So, he got pinched. I hate pinching. Elliot ran away from the table and his heart was beating fast and he was breathing hard. So he ran away and anger. But when he looked back, he saw that Bear was crying. Bear was scared. Look at his picture. 
alligator took a deep breath and started to calm down. He didn't feel like, he didn't like seeing Bear cry and he didn't feel bad. So whenever, I guess, whenever he sees his friend cry, he feels bad. Alligator went back to the table and said, I'm sorry, Bear, I didn't mean to make you sad. So he's apologizing. The bear looks kind of, okay. That's okay, I get angry sometimes too, said Bear. And they started painting a picture together. That's not how things would work when I, if I did that, that's not how it would work out. It would be going to your room. See the little fit? They shared the table, took turns using the yellow paint. So they're drawing another flower. When Bear and Alligator had finished their painting, they put it on the wall. Look how beautiful that looks. It was beautiful. And It was a beautiful and it filled the room with color. So you can see it's beautiful outside. That ain't a photo. That's the outside window. And the heat, they're both dancing because they're happy. And then you can see a photo of them. Okay. The next book we're going to read is There Was an Old Lady Who Sang a Tongue. We're going to use the long U sound. There was an old lady who sung a tune. She sang in the morning and all afternoon. So she's singing while running down the hill. Remember the last old lady one we read a poem um, where she took a jog? I think she's taking another jog. At first her tune was kind of cute. She sang with Dog who was playing with a flute. I'm surprised that Dog can even, um, knows how to play. She sang a hip-hop song in opera. She sang the blues. She sang a tune with some cats on kazoos. So I'm guessing everyone joined in. Like I said, animals are mysterious these days. They're full of many surprises. She sang really loud. She sang out of tune. She had she had more hot air than a hot air balloon. So she was singing as loud as that woman could. She sounded just awful. She did not have a clue. She wanted to sing every tune that she knew. So she's standing on a car, and people think it's absolutely terrible. She loved to sing. She was having a hoot. Can someone please put that old lady on mute? Then, a, then in flew a fly with right at Q. Oh, no. This isn't going to go very well. Remember the... Oh, an owl! Remember the old lady who ate everything? Terrible. She swallowed a bee, a dog, a horse. Ugh, it's terrible. She swallowed the fly. Believe it, it's true. And so her tune ended. Now what should she do? So she swallowed that fly. Face doesn't look very pretty. What did she do? I'll give you a clue. It had eight legs and she ate it too. Whoa, she ate a spider. Yuck. And that was, these are some, that's her singing, and then these are some of the words that were. Okay, we finished the old lady who sang tune. Next, we're going to sing the book. I told you I was going to read the, the one book, this book, yesterday, but we weren't going to have enough time because it was going to not let me post it. Because normally videos don't let you post past third past 30 so so by the way this book is called the kissing hand well, i'm reading it to you today because i didn't have enough time for tomorrow um so you can see there's a bunny yeah that's a bunny and let's see kissing her hand this author is so good at pictures so you can see, it looks like a raccoon. Yeah, that's a raccoon. You can see the butterflies and daisies. And up here is a little bird. And I did it. I know this book is going to be good. 
Chef the raccoon sat at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please, can I stay home with you? So he's crying because he doesn't want to go to school. And you can see a little ladybug right there. They're really good with shading. You will make new friends and play with new toys. So you can see there's a new friend in a sandbox. Read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem warm and cozy as your days at home. So as you can see, she's reading a book. He's reading a book. A little mouse is reading a book while he's listening to it. And then you can see they're on the swing. That's Mama and Raccoon. And that's a stunt. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said so Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother. She learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand? asked Chester. What's that? So you can see over here is like a frog, a snail. There's a I don't know, dragonfly, and I love dragonfly. So the mother is grabbing his hand. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely, you love him from home. Just press your hand against your cheek and think, Mommy loves you, Mommy loves you, and that every look, that that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty warm thoughts. You can see there's a little mouse, a bee. You can see. That's a big raccoon. She took Chester's hands and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, you'll open your hand and wash your food. I promise this kiss will stick. So you can see there's lots of animals. Look at that tree, so beautiful. And then she is telling him, don't lose that kiss, teasing her. Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knows his mother will love him wherever he go, even to school. So he loved it, the kissing hand. You can see. So he has a ball. And then I guess he has a baby raccoon. That night, Chester stood in the front of his school and looked awful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me a hand, he told him. So you can see there's a beautiful spider web. So you can see the big full moon. And then you can see ya. So he's going to school at night. This is daytime. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward to kiss the sun. So he's kissing his mama while the animals are watching. Now you have a kissing hand too, she told him. For a gentle goodbye, I love you, Chester. Turn away and dance away. So all the animals are going to go to school. That's their school. And while the mother is waving goodbye, Miss Raccoon watched Chester scramble across a tree limb and enter his school. And as the hoot owl ran in the new school year, she pressed her left hand into her cheek and smiled. The word for Chester's kiss over her heart was special. It was Chester loves you, it said. You can see the owl. You can see him going to school while the mother pressed her hand against her cheek. Oh my god! This is beautiful! Look at this! So this is their school. I'm guessing that's their teacher or their bell ringer. And then this filter says, I love you. Like, I love you guys, because you guys are watching and made us get this many subscribers. Oh, it's one of these books. So it's kind of like it's one of those books that looks like a book is connected. Alright, that was the kissing hand. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm just kidding. The video's not over. Alright, the next book we're going to read is Let's Go to the Zoo, another flip-flop book. 
Let's see. It's a bright and early at the zoo. The money wait. The monkey waits. Ooh ooh. Rawr, roars the lion. The bluebird says cheep. Only the giraffe does not make a peep. Lift the flaps to see what animal is making a noise. Cheep cheep. What's under here? What do you think it is? A bird is correct. What do you think that is? Mm hmm. I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little time. Bah! So he climbs onto the hill. Squawk. So this one's a little bit hard. Let's see a bird. A tiger. A rabbit. Rabbit. So he's wondering what it is. It's froggy. Arp, arp. So he has a ball. The kid's like, whoa, what is that? He throws the ball and the seal catches it. See the giraffes. There's a clown. Ooh, ooh. There, open that up. He's playing with a balloon. Durr. So you can see there's a tiger. And another tiger, the butterfly. So you can see the butter, he's trying to grab the butterfly. So you see, there's a butterfly. So that one's like, <gasps> it's a snake. It's snake friends. Woo, I don't really like snakes, that's my opinion. The most colors are nice and bright. The big parrot is talking flight. The pink flamingo stands a while, and a spready gator makes ready to smile. How many different colored animals can you find? Let's take a good dolphin. He did it! What color is that? I'll give you a couple seconds. It's a blue dolphin. So you can see the little girl's like, oh! and comes out. It gives a high five. What color is that? Brown, correct! A green. It's green. Dang it. What color is this? It's pink. Correct. You can see a little parrot. It's a red parrot. You can see a blue. I don't know what that is. See the bird? No, that's not smart. It's purple, by the way. Okay. Can you guess these two colors? Yellow and orange, correct. So they're chasing after each other. And what's this last color? Gray, correct. Feeding time is the moment when it'd be really fun to connect 10. Count to 10. Tortoise, seals, camels so small, the zookeepers have to feed them all. So you can see there's a monkey. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight monkeys. Let's see. Meerkats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that little girl has lettuce. He has oranges. There's one peacock. All right, you can see a turtle. How many turtles are there? One, two, three. Correct. All right, you can see it. Wow, there's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of these animals that I do not know. Okay. Iguanas. Elephant. There's two elephants. They're getting fed peanuts. These are camels. Four camels. Oh, I forgot. Let's count together. One, two, three, four. Good to see on here. The koala. So they're getting fed lettuce. So you can see it. One, two, three, four, five. There's five koalas. 
And then you can see a little penguin. There's ten penguins. Let's see if you can count them. Correct if you guess ten. So you can see it. There's Froggy's gonna feed it. The other, they're all coming towards him. And then right here, the seal. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seals. Let's go to the next task. Riding on safari, we can see a monkey swinging from a tree. The zebra jumps, the turtle crawls, the elephant sprays a waterfall. Our task is to find all action words. Okay. So you can see this, they're riding a car, so that's we found one action. You can see he's running. And here comes the car. <laughs> Their car is fast. Next, where's that swinging monkey? So he's climbing, rolling, crawling. Racing. The baby one. The baby one. Hooray! Splashing is the action word. There looks like they're having fun. They're getting sprayed. Swimming. Can you guys swim? I can't. Jumping. Yay! Hatching. Their babies hatched and the monkey's looking at them. All right. The sun goes down, the fun day ends. We made lots of new furry friends. Mom calls their babies for the night. Curled, to, curled together, they're all sleep tight. Good night. Good night, guys. Just kidding. We're not ending the video. Okay, here's our task. Can you match with the baby animals with their parents? So you can see, we have to find all of these. Let's see. Did you find it? All right, the baby. So we found one baby. Which one, Matt? Look at this one closely. And which one matches these? This one is correct! So you can see there's some koalas. They see the mama. That's not the koalas. The penguin. There's their two babies. Look at these ones closely. Which one matches? This one is correct! Okay, there's a goat. See the goat? He got scared. Okay, look at this one closely. Okay, which one matches these? This one is correct. Okay, you see a seal. See, he grabs the ball. He sees a little baby. All right, which one matches that one? This one is correct. Let's go to the lion. Look at the goal. All right, which one matches any of these? This one is correct, the lion club. You can see there's, there's something bubbling. Did you fart? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I didn't fart. There we can see the little hippopotamus cap. It is the answer. And you can see which one matches these. This one is correct. And good night, animal. We finished all the tasks. Good job. All right, next one we're going to read is How and Why Spiders Spin Silk. Okay, there's this web or silk. If you guys do not like spiders, I would close your eyes. But if you do like spiders, you can still watch it. But if you're brave, watch this. 
Look at the pictures. A garden spider weaves in silky web, covered with dew, and the webs look like diamond necklace. Look at that spider. But I know you guys like to learn on my channel. A jumping spider spins a silk anchor anchor line. The thread looks fragile, but it's very strong. Spiders make all kinds of stuff. They use their silk in many ways. So you can see the spider has three eyes. So it comes out of there. The spider's garden web is deadly insect trap. When a grasshopper blunders into the web, it's caught in the silky threads. The hungry spider rushes over and wraps its grass mare meal and shields the sick. The silk is made from glands of the spider in the spider's belly. It comes out through the opening called spinnerets. All spiders have spinnerets and they all make silk this way. So the first thing is that the bug gets caught and then the spider wraps it up, wraps it very good, and then eats it. The jumping spider pounces like their prey on a on, on its prey like a cat. As the spider leaves its silk anchor lane and cheers behind it. The silk is liquid when it comes out, but dries at once. So you can see the spider uses this. So you can see it's going after this thing. See the spider is jumping. Anchor line is strong than steel wire. It is firmly fastened to a flower. If the spider misses its mark, it will not fall very far. The anchor line will catch it. Then the spider will climb back up the anchor line to the flower. So if it misses, it can do it um, like several times. Ugh, so gross. Many spiders use silk to make nests. A silky nest is a safe place for a spider to hide. So you can see that spider is hiding in its web. You may see a spider's house. You may see a house spider's nest. They, they may be, there may be one in your house. I'm just kidding. There is no big spiders that you see in this book. That's in my house. I know that for sure. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. The spider's house is a messy tangle of silk. This house spider is not a very neat house. Spider. So, look at that. Ew. Guys, check your house. Oh. <laughs> the crab spider has no web. It waits for insects to come to a flower. When a bee comes looking for its nectar, the crab spider rushes over and bites it. And the bite is poisonous and the bee stops moving. So if you get bit by this, um, I'm guessing you stop moving. Then the spider pumps juices into the bee. Then the juice turns the, ins the inside of the bee into the bee soup. And the spider sucks it up. The crab spider does not use silk to catch its prey. But like many spiders, this has another use for silks. So you can see the bee does not go anywhere because... It got bit. Ugh, so gross. Female spiders wrap their eggs in sheets of soft silk. Then the spider bundles up her silk wrapped eggs into round egg sac. Many spiders stay near their eggs to grow. So these are their eggs if from a female. And then mothers, if you're a scorpions, carry their eggs on their back which I don't think is smart, but whatever. Do it your... The wolf spider sack is attached to their spinners. It carries wherever she goes. Yeah, these spiders aren't smart. They carry it. And so this mother guards their eggs. <laughs> the garden spider uses strong strains of silk to fasten their egg sack to a plant. Her eggs will spend their winter there safe and silk. Look at how gross that is. I don't even know why I'm reading this book. Young spiders hatch inside their nest. In the early spring, they leave the nest ready to spin webs of their own. They're kind of cute. And we finished the creepy spider book. Next is book flies, life cycles. 
another. This is our last book. Let's see the beautiful butterfly. Some of them can be poisonous. Depends on what you're using. Life cycle. All animals go through different stages of growth between the time they are born and the time they die. These stages in animals make up their life in the animal's life cycle. Giant pandas, marched butterflies, poison dart frogs, and condor dragons all have life cycles, but not all animals go through the stages of their life cycle the same way. So, let's see, giant pandas. Giant pandas are mammals that give birth to life, so they're gonna teach you a little bit. Monarch butterfly. The monarch butterflies are insects that hatch from egg caterpillars. Poison dart frog. The poison dart frogs are. What is that word? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I don't. I don't remember. Amphibians. That's kind of close. That hatch from eggs as tadpoles. A condomu dragon. Condomu dragons are reptiles that hatch from their eggs. Let's see the. In this book, you'll learn about this life cycle of monarch butterflies. So that is the butterflies are talked about. The life cycle of monitored butterflies. Have you seen a monitored butterfly? Monitored butterflies have bright orange wings with a black border. On the wings are two rows of white spots and veins outlined in black. But monitors do not start their, li their lives looking beautiful. In fact, they change the way they several times of their life. A typical insect. Monitors are insects. An insect is a small animal head that has no backbone. Its body is divided into three parts. Most insects have three pairs of legs and no, and no or two pairs of wings. Like all insects, monitors undergo many changes, changes during their lives. guys can still look out the window, by the way. A monitor butterfly was first found in North and South America. Now, they're also found in South Canada, and Australia, and Pacific Islands. In New Zealand, line, monarch butterflies failed on their milk weed plant. This plant is found in each of these countries. During the winter season, monarch butterflies fly to a warmer place. They can travel a long way. Some fly all the way to Canada to Mexico. They cover more than 2,000 kilometers in 1,243 miles in about 8 to 10 weeks. So that is a monarch butterfly. I've seen those, I think. And then this is the world where... So that's where the monarch butterfly is in. There's a little bit over there. Birth. The monarch butterfly has the same life cycle as most other insects. Like most insect monarch butterflies pass through several stages before they reach a childhood, adulthood. So if you don't know what um, life cycle means, life cycle, all the stages in an animal's life. So like when you come to it, like this is how I would say, baby, kid, teen, adult, grandma, or grandpa. So that's basically a life cycle. Here is how monarch butterfly life cycle begin. A female monarch butterfly lays eggs on a leaf of milkweed. Plant. After two weeks, a caterpillar or larva hatches from, from each egg. The newborn caterpillar begins to its life by eating its own eggshell. The caterpillar of milk weed leaf. So that is the caterpillar or how they start up. Growth. Monarch butterflies grow in three stages. The first stage is the caterpillar. A newborn caterpillar is only one to three one to two millimeters inches long it feeds on milk milk weed weeks. after two or three weeks the caterpillar measures about five centimeters two inches and its skin harbors into a type of shell 
Calabar's new form is called Pumba, or Trilis. The Pumba stays inside its shell about one week. It does not eat. It uses energy saving up from all the eating milkweed leaves as a caterpillar. About a week, the monarch breaks out of its shell of the Pumba. Now it stays, its body is very different. The Pumba has a hard outer shell. So this is what their shell looks like. Yeah, I know. It looks like a pickle. Reproduction. The next stage of monarch's butterfly life, life is a reductive is the making of offspring, or babies, because butterflies or insects, their offspring hatch from their eggs. Reproduction. The making of offspring or babies. Reproduction begins of the life joining... Oh, wait, I read the wrong thing. A female mardarch usually lays one egg in a single milkweed leaf. That way, each caterpillar has enough milkweed to feed on it. The female also products a type of glue that attaches the egg to the leaf. Monarch butterfly and milk. So this is what we're talking about. Lifespan. The final stage in the um, life cycle is death. The lifespan of the most monarch butterflies two to five weeks after leaving the pumba. The butterflies door sh die shortly after the female lays eggs. However, butterflies are born at the end of summer. They can live through winter months. These butterflies reduce and die following the spawn and spring. Male and female adults come together. So, first they meet up. The female butterfly lays eggs that have been fertilized by the male butterfly. So they lay their egg, and then the boy fertilizes it. A caterpillar hatches from the egg. So then the caterpillar hatches. The caterpillar sheds its skin and becomes a pumba. So that's what it looks like after. When the butterfly emerges from the pumba, it is an adult. It can now repeat the life cycle of producing offspring. Then it emerges. At the end of the life cycle, the butterfly dies in its final stage in the life cycle. And then. And that's all we're going to read today. Um, tomorrow's chapter will be very interesting. And plus, if we finish the whole book, it's going to be past 40. So we're going to read the Butterfly book tomorrow. And we'll see what happens in the next stage. See you later. Smell you later. I'm just kidding. You guys don't smell. Probably. <laughs> see ya.